previously on Fog Dog's 1,000 subscriber special. Fog Dog surpassed 1,000 subscribers and started the Q&A before realizing he had far too many questions to answer in one video. I'm going to make a part three of the Fog Dog Exclusives 1,000 subscriber special where I finish off the questions. Welcome back to another episode of the Fog Dog Exclusive. My name is Adam Fogg and this is part three of the 1,000 subscriber special on the Fog Dog Exclusive. And in today's episode, I'm going to be finishing off the Q&A from last week's episode and answering the rest of your questions. Today comes from Caleb Gilbert and it is good day fog dog. I'm struggling with plantar fasciitis, just wondering if you have any tips for it to get better. Good day, Caleb. I hope you are doing alright and that your injuries are slowly improving. I am not really a good one to give proper medical advice, but I would recommend probably taking a few days off running completely, seeing if it improves, because sometimes it can be an overuse issue, I think. But again, I'm not one for giving proper medical advice. So if taking a few days off doesn't help with an injury and cross training, say doing something like a bike ride or a swim instead of actually running, I would definitely recommend going to a podiatrist or a physio. And going to a podiatrist or a physio, they may end up recommending that you go to a specialist shoe store in your area and kind of get your feet properly looked at and get a pair of running shoes that is gonna support the injured or affected area of your feet or legs or body a bit more than the shoes you're currently running in. But again, I don't really know too much about how you're running at the moment, what shoes you're running in, your mileage or anything like that. And they're definitely all factors that will affect how much you get injured and how severe your injuries are when you get injured. So definitely, if taking a few days off running doesn't help, I would recommend going and seeing a proper specialist. All right, our next question today comes from Nicholas Watson, and it is, what are some of your favorite sessions to run, and what are your favorite exercises to do in the weight room? All right, I'm gonna start by saying the weight room for me is really quite boring. I'm not a huge fan of doing gym, but in America we have a proper gym and we get a program that we follow. And that program includes all kinds of things, including pull-ups, squats, calf raises, glute work, and core. And I'd probably say those kind of exercises are the most important for running. Overall, I think with the gym work, you just wanna be working a load of different muscle groups that you use for while you're running. And while strength training is really important, it's also very important just for injury prevention as well so you're not necessarily trying to get really big or strong just for kind of middle distance or long distance running but it's actually really important to be doing that strength training in order to kind of minimize your risk of injury as well and in terms of some of my favorite sessions to run I love doing long threshold or tempo workouts especially during obviously base and cross-country season I think doing threshold work is such a good way for you to get fit and honestly every single time you do a good threshold workout I think your body definitely gets stronger and so doing threshold stuff during cross country and base phase is definitely my favourite session. They are quite tough but you really feel the benefit from doing them and then during track season where we're doing kind of faster workouts and stuff like that for more kind of 1500 specific type racing I love doing anything from kind of three or 400 meter repeats at a fast pace where you're running say around your 1500 meters pace or even sometimes a bit quicker like your 800 meters pace for three and 400 meter reps i absolutely love that kind of work and i think on the track definitely sometimes speed work is actually quite underrated when you're going to be racing things like the 800 1500 even like the 3k 5k you really do need to actually have quite a lot of speed in you and while it's not all that important during cross country or base phase I think once you're actually in your track season, doing stuff like short, sharp speed reps is really important. And so I love doing that kind of session going into track season. All right, our next question or questions today come from Spencer Mann, Aiden Kelly, and Oliver Gajdowski. And they're all asking about my favorite running shoes. So for this one, I'm gonna pass it over to Fog Dog 
and rumor has it Fog Dog has just finished a morning run. So passing it over to Fog Dog. Fog Dog, what are your favorite shoes to run in? Great questions, fellas. Thank you for sending them through. It is post run Fog Dog here. I've just been for an easy grassy run with Matt Hanso. Uh, it was a rainy one this morning. We got a bit of mud on the shirt, but you know what they say, rain, hail or shine. So we got out there, got it done. Nice, easy 8K on the grass, and then a few bends and straights as well, just for a bit of speed work after an easy run. All right, so my favorite shoes. We are gonna start with my favorite of all time. Obviously, I know one of the questions said other than the next percents, but it would be rude not to mention them. So the first pair are the next percents. All right, so these, I have never run in a shoe like this before. They're actually unbelievable. So if you haven't tried them, I would definitely recommend at least trying a pair. Uh, I did my 5k and 10k road time trials in Harry Port Hills next percent, so not this exact pair, but the same thing. And I can honestly say I've never run in a shoe like it. They are just unbelievable for road running. But as I've mentioned in previous videos, I don't always run in the Nike shoes at Drake in America. We are an Adidas sponsored school. So if I'm not running in next percent, my next pick would be the Adidas Boston. I don't know if you follow me on Strava, but if you don't, uh, this is a shoe I do pretty much all of my workouts in at the moment. They're a great flat. I've done 5Ks, park runs, road runs, tempos, and pretty much all of my workouts at the moment I do in the Adidas Boston. So that is another really great shoe. Probably not quite as springy as the next percent, but a really great lightweight racing flat as well. All right, so they are the flats and the road running shoes I run in, but then when I'm on the track, a year ago, I would have said my favorite spike would be the Adidas Avanti. They're what I ran my 340, 1500 in, in England. But in the American indoor season, I ran all of my indoor races in the Adidas Ambition. And this is another great shoe. This is probably my favorite spike now. It's taken over the Avanti. I ran my four flat mile in this exact pair of shoes. And they're a really great, lightweight, springy, responsive spike for the track. I haven't run outdoor in these yet, but I mean, running an indoor season in them, I, I knew straight away. I think I did my first stride ever in them and I was like, yeah, they're a great spike. And going into my next outdoor season, next season, hopefully, this is a shoe I definitely will hopefully be running in quite a lot. All right, moving on from my racing shoes, I will show you a couple of pairs of shoes that I do lots of my easy jogging in. So today I ran in my Adidas Solar Drives. These are pretty dirty. They're quite muddy after today's run. But as well, I like to do a lot of running in Adidas Solar Boosts. Now, this is pretty similar to the Solar Drives that I ran in today, but they're just a bit more kind of cushioned and springy. So I kind of mix it up a bit. Most of my running is done in Solar Drives, but I mix it up and do some running in these as well. All right, that is it for my shoes. We are gonna pass it back over to Fog Dog, who is on holiday in Noosa to finish off the questions. Yes, boys and girls, that is right. Fog Dog is out here in Noosa on Queensland's Sunshine Coast for a quick getaway with his mum and dad. I got out for my long run this morning. I got 25.1K done at 3.38 per K. I'll pop the Strava map in here with a few of the splits as well. And with that, we are straight back into the Q&A and I'm going to be finishing off your questions. So the next question comes from Charlie Edwards and he says, hey, it's Charlie from London. With 5k training, how many miles a week do you roughly have to run to get under 17 minutes? Hi Charlie from London, great question. For every runner, it's different. So for some people, they can run 20 miles a week and break 17 minutes for the 5k, where other people will be running 100 miles a week and not breaking 17 minutes. So for me, when I first broke 17 minutes, I would have been running about 30 miles a week, and now I'm running 90 miles a week and I'm well under 17 minutes obviously, but it changes for every person. Obviously everyone reacts differently to training and so as long as you're doing good sessions, you're doing a long run each week and you're recovering well, I think you'll definitely get under that 17 minute barrier as long as you're kind of pushing towards it in training and your runs overall. So on the subject of London, the next question comes from Connor Gil Martin and he says, cheeky London video when you're over here? Absolutely. Connor, I hope to be back in England next summer, as in next English summer. Obviously, a year ago right now, I was in England running, doing some races, and yeah, definitely 
this time next year, fingers crossed, I will be in England racing and making some cheeky London videos. The next question comes from Luke Burrows. You keen for a big year ahead, brother? How are you feeling leading into August? I am pretty unsure about what's going to be going on in August. Obviously, for everyone in Australia right now, we've just heard that the borders are going to be shut until September or October. And obviously, meant to be heading back to America in August. So, kind of unsure of what's going to happen. I'm not sure if we'll get our cross-country season, but fingers crossed that we actually do get to race. But if not, uh, we're in a pretty good spot right here in Queensland, in Australia. I'll be training and hopefully... <laughs> hopefully, if not racing in America, hopefully I'll be racing in Australia. So then we've got a question from Thomas Murphy, and he says, which colleges did you apply for when choosing what college you wanted to go to? Great question, Tom. I was actually quite lucky. So in Australia, we've got our domestic season, and all of our times and PVs get publicised online. And so I didn't actually apply to any colleges at all. I had a few college coaches message me, and that's pretty much how I think most athletes who go from Australia over to America to be in the college system end up going about it. So if you're starting to run decent times and doing well at uh, national competitions, you will start to get coaches messaging you and being interested in your running and potentially getting you to come over to America to run for their college. So I spoke to a few in the end, but obviously I left it quite late uh, going over to America in the end. I did two years of uni in Australia and then got a few coaches messaging me once I started to run a bit quicker. And so I think you can apply and kind of message the coaches yourself. But if you start to run in kind of quicker times and you're running well nationally, you will start to get that interest from coaches anyway. And then they can message you on anything from your email to Instagram, Facebook or yeah, whatever kind of social media you actually have. All right, with that, we are going to head back over to Fog Dog in the hotel room to finish off the questions. All right, I am now back in the hotel room and I'm here to finish off the rest of the Q&A. I actually went for a run this afternoon with Ben Tacey and Hudson Jessup in the Headland National Park in Noosa and I had a bit of a fall, so I've cut my arm up. I don't know if you can see that, but I've got a pretty bad cut all down my arm. And then my hip and my knee are really pretty bad as well. So I've got a workout plan for the morning, but I'm not sure how that's going to go. I'm going to give it a go and see if I can manage it, but I'm not sure how my body will hold up. My knee is really quite sore to bend and my hip kind of is aching all the time, as well as my arm. But I mean, my arm will be fine. I don't really need it too much to run. So we'll see. I'm planning on making a video from tomorrow's workout because it's meant to be quite a big workout. And I think it would definitely make a good video if I am up to it. Anyway, so moving on with the Q&A, the next question I'm gonna answer comes from George Madison. And it is, what has your mileage progression been over the years since you first started training? All right, so that is a great question. And mileage is something that definitely needs to be taken quite seriously. I think it can definitely be overdone, but it can also be underdone. And depending on your age and your training sessions and your actual racing goals, there are definitely different ways to go about looking at mileage. For me personally, when I was younger, when I was in high school, I was never high mileage at all. When I was 16, say, I would have been running about 40, 50K a week which would have been 25 to 30 miles a week. When I was a senior in high school at the age of 17, I reckon on the odd occasion, I would have been up to 70 or maybe 80K a week, which is probably 45, 50 miles on a big week. And at that point in time, I'd run 359 in the 1500 and I ran an 841 3K. And then in my first year out of high school, when I turned 18, I probably was only averaging about 70K a week and occasionally I'd pick it up to 80 or maybe the odd week at 90k a week. So I've never really been high mileage at all until I went over to college. But definitely I think when you're younger, say from anywhere between the ages of 10 to probably 16, 17, even 18, I really wouldn't recommend overdoing the mileage. I reckon definitely focusing on speed when you're younger is really important. And then when you get older, as you're more developed, you can start to add in that mileage. All right, on the topic of mileage, our next question comes from David McPherson. 
and it is how did you build up to doing two runs a day, any more than five runs a week, and I start picking up injuries. All right, so again, I'm probably not one for giving proper advice when it comes to injuries. I would probably recommend going and seeing a professional if your injuries are kind of sticking around more than they should be. But in terms of adding in double runs to your weekly running schedule, I'd probably recommend getting your mileage up to a point where you're quite happy with it already. And then maybe you could start to cut down some of your runs, add in a rest day and add in a short double. So to begin with, say if you were doing 10K in one run on an average Tuesday, you could split that run into a four and a six. And then slowly over time, that four in the morning could stay the same and the six could turn into a seven or an eight or a nine, even eventually up to a 10, so that you're still doing your original day, but you're adding in that four kilometer run in the morning for just a bit of extra kind of flush out for the legs, just a bit of strength work for them and just really a bit of extra mileage at the end of the day. But if you are constantly picking up injuries and there's really nothing you can do to stop that, definitely cross training, like things like bike riding are really good ways to get in almost a second run. So say if you can't fit in that second run, you could go for a half an hour bike ride every second morning or something like that. And I really think bike riding is actually very beneficial for running. I think it's really good for strengthening your legs and obviously it's really low or even no impact for all of your joints as well. So cycling, definitely a good option for cross training. All right, our next question comes from Ayan Ayubi and it is best workouts for the 1500. All right, so once you've got a really solid base under your belt and you've done quite a lot of mileage, say over your summer, going through cross country and then you're into your track season, if you're fit, I really think doing really strong speed workouts is great for the 1500. So things like speed endurance workouts are really quite important for 1500 running because you're trying to run so fast for relatively quite a long time and you really need to be fit and fast in order to run a good 1500. So one of the sessions I ran before I ran my 340, 1500 PB, I think I ran it a couple of weeks before I ran my PB, was four by 600 with five minutes recovery and you're running them pretty much all out. So at that time, I think I averaged about 128 per 600, four in a row, and then I did some sharper 200 meter reps after that just to kind of sharpen the legs up after doing some really solid speed endurance work. And with running a session like four by 600 followed by some faster 200s, you're getting that really good speed endurance work. You're working hard for an extended period of time and then you're getting that speed in your legs as well after with the 200s. But as well, I think as I mentioned earlier in the video, proper speed workouts are quite underrated on the track. And so even doing things like all out 100s, 200s, 300s, is really quite beneficial for trying to run fast over 1500 meters. All right, the final question I'm gonna ask out. today comes from Joe Milton running and is, what time do you go to sleep to wake up at 3.45 a.m.? Fog dog, where did you go? Fog dog? Fog dog? Where are you? Fog dog? Fog dog? Is that you? Fog dog, what are you doing? It's only half past seven. <sighs> All right, that last part obviously was a joke. I don't actually go to bed at half past seven. I wish I did though. When I am up at 3.45 for training, I try and be in bed by around about nine o'clock so that I still get a decent sleep. And I end up napping quite a lot during the day as well when I've got nothing on. But sometimes I do struggle to get to bed early enough before training so I then don't get quite enough sleep. But overall, I would say around about 9, 9.30 when I'm up really early for training. Anyway, that is it. I did my best to answer all of the questions. I know there are still some that didn't get answered, but I will be doing more Q&As in the future. So if your questions didn't get answered, I will be doing definitely more Q&As in the future. Anyway, with that, we will see you in next week's video. Next week on Fog Dog Exclusive. Fog Dog is a wounded man but a wounded man who is back for a huge workout. A bad arm, a bad leg, and my hip is really quite sore. Watch as Fog Dog braves his injuries to take on a huge threshold workout. Feeling. All right. A bit sore, but I'll be all right. I want to give it a go and see what happens.
good temperature for running. See all of this and more next Thursday, July 2nd, 7 p.m. Central Time. Alright, we're back on the road, back on the bike track. I got a minute and a half recovery left, and then we're on to the final rep. Two miles to go, and then we'll be done. Only on the Fog Dog exclusive.